Vanity puts vanity before kindness to animals. In the cold glare of my own I want to buy, my disdain for designer labels and all things consumers became a little, shall we say, mushy. I was the type of guy who shopped for the 52-inch television, then thought he was a rebel against consumerism because he bought the discounted floor model. I don't mean to imply that I was a total do-nothing liberal. I did go to Pennsylvania to canvass voters in the 2000 and 2004 elections. I made get-out-the-vote phone calls for moveon.org when they asked me to. I tried to adopt some sort of an attitude of service in my daily encounters and to generally avoid doing harm. I volunteered at the World Trade Center site after 9-11. I even prayed for George Bush on the premise that hating him just created a hateful world. The question was, given the state of world affairs, whether I shouldn't have been asking more of myself. A few months after our TV fur negotiation, Michelle got offered a brand new thousand-dollar white fox shawl by a friend whose father is a furrier in Michelle's hometown, Minneapolis. It's free, and the fox is already dead, went Michelle's reasoning. It's not one fox, it's ten, went mine. I've already suffered your freebasing bad television, and we have a deal about this, I said. But those are your standards, replied Michelle. Then came her trump card. I want to discuss it at couples therapy. Not that what we actually went to was couples therapy. What really happened was I would drop by sometimes during one of Michelle's sessions with her own therapist. Anyway, I trundled along to the Upper East Side office, and Michelle explained the situation. Free fox shawl on the one hand, no fur on the other, which is Colin's standard. Why, Michelle asked, should I have to adhere to his ethic? When the therapist turned to me and said, Colin? I surprised both of them by saying that Michelle could buy all the fur she wants. Except, I said, there's one condition to my releasing her from our deal. And here's the part where I look like a jerk. Namely, that Michelle read out loud certain passages of a PETA brochure about the fur trade that I'd highlighted in green. I can read them when I get home, Michelle said. Nope, I said. The deal is, if you want to renege on our fur deal, you read it out loud, here. Sport that she is, Michelle grabbed the papers, cleared her throat, and began to read. Two results came of all this. First, Michelle decided that she didn't want to buy fur anymore because she actually has the biggest heart known to humankind, and because we are nowhere near so different on the inside as we seem on the outside. Second, 